what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and we are back with the bhagavad gita today we shall discuss on the 41st verse today and also the 42nd we have completed the first 40 verses where arjuna is giving different arguments back to back one after the other why not to kill his miscreant cousins <laughs> and lord krishna is patiently hearing he's like okay i'm listening i will reply so Lord Krishna is not going to reply till the end of the first chapter and there are only 46 verses so we are nearing the end of the first chapter and here Arjuna also gave the argument recently that when a religion is prominent in the family O Krishna the women of the family become polluted and from their degradation comes unwanted progeny and now we will continue with the 41st verse and if you are new to the channel and you have not subscribed to it yet then please subscribe to it below somewhere here there <laughs> and if you want a personal consultation for me then approach me in my website Vedic Renaissance that's there below in the description and before I begin as I always say God is there with you all the time just look to him and you'll find him and before I recite we'll have the invocation to our preceptors and the gurus and the sages who have Bestowed the divine wisdom unto us. Omagyan timirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri guruve namaha. So, till the 40th verse of the first chapter, we saw Arjuna's different arguments. And the recent argument which he gave was he said, comes unwanted progeny. So, what is the meaning of this word, Varna Sankara? I have to explain this a bit. Unwanted progeny. Unwanted progeny simply means that when a man and a woman have no interest in spiritual enquiry, in spiritual wisdom, <coughs> then unfortunately the child which is born from their union is also like them. Because science also says the genes and the chromosomes, they because your child is ultimately a output of both of you, right? So the child who, who will be born, either he's a boy or a girl, irrespective of that, he or she will not have any spiritual inquisitiveness and then at the end they will destroy their own lives you can see what's happening in the modern society today people have gone into all sorts of addictions depressions marriages are falling apart people are unhappy with their lives there are suicides and there's general unhappiness permeating in the atmosphere why that is happening because not that there is no problem there is problem of money no earlier days my father he used to earn very less he was a government official but he was very satisfied with his life but nowadays i have seen my friends and my elders of my of my generation like my brother and my cousins they are earning maybe that much money in one month which my father would have earned in maybe 3 years <laughs> or 2 years or 1 year but why are they unhappy? Why are they miserable? Why are they crying always? Why are they sad? Why are they in depression? Why are they not having a sense of healthy well-being? That is because they are disconnected from the ultimate source which is God consciousness. They are not conscious that there is a person called God to whom I am accountable. Who is my best friend? Lord Krishna says in the Gita, Surida Sarva Bhutanam I am the most well-wishing friend of all the living entities suhrida sarva suhrida means best friend sarva means everybody bhutana bhuta bhutana means the living entities gyatva maam shantim ruchati whoever knows this is in peace <laughs> so when people irrespective of their religion do see what happens when the man and the woman they are not having spiritual inquiry then the marriage whenever it takes place either they are in a relationship or they are in a living relationship or they are married irrespective of that the union which is there when they are uniting the offspring which is produced that because the parents are not having spiritual merits or spiritual strength so the child born will also not be inquisitive and then you are seeing what's happening in the society today people are throwing their parents out of their homes once the father or the mother is not able to do anything good for them materially okay 
then they are just throwing them out that is why the number of old age homes are going up every day that's so sad even in a country like india where elders are treated like god or they are supposed to be treated like god so the family values are going down the morals are going down people are changing partners relationships like this i'm not talking of the west here people will say that okay na in the west there are lots of divorces why west why not india <laughs> those indians who always uh, blackmail or they blaspheme the west they should also see their own country sometimes yes now maybe the number is not as terrible as it is in the west but still it is a alarming number the number of divorces are getting sky high and even if people are not divorced either they are miserable in the relationships or they are having extramarital affairs and there are cases like people are swapping each other's partners also so many cases i am hearing these days that okay two couples meet and then they are saying okay for one night your wife is my wife and my wife is your wife for one night let's enjoy let's have fun so if these are the kinds of uh, belief systems that you have cultivated from your childhood then how can you expect that you will have offsprings who will be spiritually inquisitive i am not saying elevated <laughs> i am just saying how can you expect that you will also have offsprings who will uh, have spiritual inquiry that who will also want to lead a god conscious life who will also want to get up in the morning and chant the mantras and not waste time in the night by watching game of thrones maybe or going to the parties drinking smoking or eating meat or indulging in illicit sex or gambling all these avenues yes therefore arjuna is concerned that if there are no men left then women will be polluted and by this degradation there will be unwanted progeny and the number one symptom of unwanted progeny is they are extremely selfish that is how the people of this kaliyuga are today i remember my mother used to say about my grand grandmother and my grandfather that if they used to now again i am not boasting of my grandparents here i am just giving you the comparison of how the traditions have gone down here all right this will be true with even your grandparents not mine with everybody's our grandparents they are from the generation of maybe 20s 30s or 40s right so my mother used to say that my grandparents they used to get sleepless nights i'm repeating they were not able to sleep when they used to hear that some other person is in distress can you imagine yes they they used to feel oh my god how can i sleep this person is crying so bad it is so terrible <laughs> and then even in my parents generation i have seen there are many people of my father's many contemporaries who are also like that but then again in my father's generation itself i see some people who are completely the opposite and then now i see my own generation i see my elder brother my uh, my cousins my sisters i mean i don't have a sister but my cousin sisters they are least interested in what good is happening in the society they they are just interested in the opposite sex what the boys are doing what the girls are doing trying to impress the opposite sex if it is a girl the only thing they are doing is dressing and looking themselves making themselves look good so that other boys will come and tell them oh you look so cute you look so good you look so beautiful that's the value which they have put on themselves my uh, my female friends that i know and then uh, my other people who i know they even if they are males they have also they they have also started behaving in ways which uh, is very detrimental to the family and to the structure and they are all the time simply running behind either the opposite sex or money and they are extremely selfish unfortunately <laughs> i am also one of them unfortunately but what i am saying is this is how the values have been degraded from the generation of our grandparents then to our parents and to our generation and i don't know i fear to say maybe i don't know what will be the situation of the generation who comes after us there you go that is the meaning of unwanted progeny here unwanted simply means that people uh, your progeny your 
the children who will be born will not have spiritual inquisitiveness all right and then they will indulge in sinful habits and they will they will cause distress to you how will you feel if your if your child is a victim of um, drug abuse or has contracted some terrible disease because of addictions alcohol and all this pornography is another uh, famous uh, example in this area recently i was hearing a video by this famous guru sadguru he was telling there that one person told him that 70% of the internet is full of pornography <laughs> so if uh, 70% of this world that means 7 billion people are there maybe out of that half of them have access to internet or maybe 30% so if you take 2 billion people who are having access to internet then 70% of 2 billion is how much maybe 1.2 billion my god that's insane that's the only thing they are doing and what about other serials and movies where they have sexually explicit material so many so much junk and garbage has been flooded in the internet right so these are typically known as unwanted population and Kali Yuga is full of such people but no problem Lord Krishna is there he will tell you how to not become an unwanted progeny <laughs> all right so Arjuna is concerned that women will degrade if they associate with men who are also degraded all right and then there will be unwanted population so now i will start with the 41st verse there you go how many verses remaining 41 42 43 44 45 46 ah the first chapter is not getting over we will finish it very soon all right so the 41st verse the sanskrit is as follows Sankaro Narakaiva Kula Jnana Kulasyacha Kula is used here. Kula is family, family tradition. Patanti Pitaro Hi Esham Lupta Pindo Daka Kriya. Do you understand this word? Pindo Daka. I will explain this. An increase of unwanted population certainly causes hellish life both for the family and for those who destroy the family tradition. Hellish life not for themselves, for both for themselves and also for those who destroy the family tradition. So an increase of unwanted population certainly causes hellish life both for the family and for those who destroy the family tradition. That means for their parents, their ancestors, their mother, father, everybody, their children also. Imagine you are you're married and you have two kids and you are having an extramarital affair what will be the effect on your children my god it's terrible right the ancestors of such corrupt families fall down because the performances for offering them food and water are entirely stopped so he's talking about the pitrus here that's why this word pindo daka is used the word pindo daka is very important here and there's words like kulak dhyanam means for those who are killers of the family Kulasya of the family, patanti, fall down, <laughs> pinda, offerings of food, udaka and water, kriyaha, performances. Oh my god, <laughs> very heavy verse. The ancestors of such corrupt families fall down because the performances for offering them food and water are entirely stopped. Well, if the, per if the generation is only interested in going to the disco, having alcohol, enjoying uh, sexual experiences and going to pubs going to movies uh, who will perform the religious activities right that is why you go and tell a young person today anywhere in this world oh are you interested in hearing what lord krishna says in the gita they will say no 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 no. i'm not interested in all these boring stuff these are very boring these are old these are useless they don't work you see and what works okay game of thrones work for me right Let's see the purport now, explanation. According to the rules and regulations of fruitive activities, there is a need to offer periodical food and water to the forefathers of the family. When this should be done? Whenever there is an Amavasya, this especially should be performed. Especially it is recommended in the scriptures that whenever there is Amavasya, there will be near about 12 Amavasyas, right? Amavasya is new moon. 
when sun and moon are exactly in the same degrees that day you can go and offer a coconut into the water please do it <laughs> and then this is like a offering to the ancestors because they have given you the body without them you will not be listening to this video you would have not taken birth at all right so it is like paying heed to them paying audience to them acknowledging them thanking them that they have given you this life because without this life what will you be doing in this world according to the rules and regulations of fruitive activities there is a need to offer periodical food and water to the forefathers of the family we can do that during amavasya this offering is performed by worship of vishnu because eating the remnants of food offered to vishnu can deliver one from all kinds of sinful reactions eating the remnants of food offered to lord vishnu can deliver one from all kinds of sinful reactions that is why in temples in india when we go they give prasad prasad means as in hindi they say prabhu ke sakshat darshan <laughs> which means prasad is that see when you cook something any offer to god that is called bhoga bhog means that which is to be enjoyed but we are not supposed to enjoy that that god is supposed to enjoy and when god enjoys that not by the way you think <laughs> krishna's senses are very powerful he he can directly see the food and also eat it he doesn't need to necessarily eat the food like we eat all right <laughs> skeptics cannot believe it they will say oh what nonsense is this now you put the plate inside and you bring it what nonsense is this you are just fooling people <laughs> they may say this we can just ignore them so what happens is when god accepts the food that you give the bhoga and then you take that back that is called prasad and food offered to vishnu may Uh, co- uh can deliver one from all kinds of sinful reactions so the papa which is there in our account the sins that we have performed those sins are nullified the more we take prasad that is why i only take prasad i do not take anything which is not offered to god ideally every one of us is supposed to do that but that may not be possible everywhere but we can try whenever we uh, cook in the morning we can offer it to god and then we can accept the remnants all right sometimes the forefathers may be suffering from various types of sinful reactions and sometimes some of them cannot even acquire a gross material body and are forced to remain in subtle bodies as ghosts this happens if your ancestors have committed some terrible sinful activities like killing somebody or causing serious damage to somebody hmm? they may be suffering from various types of sinful reactions and sometimes some of them cannot even acquire a gross body and are forced to remain in subtle bodies as ghosts so they may be wandering and when you uh, take to spiritual knowledge you take to spirituality you perform spiritual activities then because they are connected uh, in that same lineage they also get the benefit they also are delivered they also get immensely benefited and by that what happens is their sinful reactions are also countered yes that possibility is there <laughs> thankfully thanks to god that you have the power to counter the sins of your ancestors because you have performed great spiritual activities and they are forced to remain in subtle bodies as ghosts especially if somebody commits suicide it is said that the person is not given a gross body it say stays in the subtle body in the sukshma deha sthulya is this uh, gross body and sukshma is subtle body so the soul will stay in the subtle body it will be hovering around the universe where can i find a body to get in and then you have all these stories na haunted by ghosts and all this nonsense will happen they will try to enter somebody's gross body artificially and they will try to fulfill their desires thus when remnants of prasadam प्रभु के साक्षात दर्शन वेन द रेमेनेंट्स ऑफ प्रसादम फूड आर ऑफर टू फोर फादर्स बाय द डिसेंडेंट्स दैट मीन्स बाय यू एंड मी वी आर द डिसेंडेंट्स एंड दे आर आवर एंसेस्टर्स द फोर फादर्स आर रिलीज फ्रॉम घोसली और अदर काइंड ऑफ मिजरेबल लाइफ सो येस लॉर्ड कृष्णा 
will also bless them and free them from their sins. Such help rendered to forefathers is a family tradition. And those who are not in devotional life are required to perform such rituals. So that means whoever is not engaging in spirituality, they must do all this. Otherwise, the forefathers, if they have committed some blunders, they also have to pay for those sins. Yes. Such help rendered to forefathers in a family tradition. And those who are not in devotional life are required to perform such rituals. One who is engaged in the devotional life is not required to perform any such actions. My God, what has been told here? Let's see. Simply by performing devotional service, one can deliver hundreds and thousands of forefathers from all kinds of misery. It is stated in the Bhagavatam 11th Canto 5th Chapter 41st Verse. Devarsi Bhutapa Niranam Pitram Naking Karo Nanyam Niricha Rajan. The word Rajan is used. I understand who is being told here. Sarvatmana Yah Saranam Saramyam Gato Mukundam Pariyata Kartyam. The purport to this translation of the Srimad Bhagavatam is. Anyone who has taken shelter of the lotus feet of Mukunda. Mukunda, who is Mukunda here? I will read out the translation and then I will explain who is Mukunda here. Anyone who has taken shelter of the lotus feet of Mukunda, the giver of liberation. is already explained. <laughs> Giving up all kinds of obligation and has taken to the path in all seriousness. Owes neither duties nor obligations to the demigods. Sages, general living entities, family members, humankind or forefathers. My God. Such obligations are automatically fulfilled by the performance of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I will read the translation again. It's very heavy. Anyone who has taken shelter of the lotus feet of Mukunda, the giver of liberation, giving up all kinds of obligation. All right. Conditions apply. <laughs> And has taken to the path in all seriousness. All seriousness. Condition number two. <laughs> Owes neither duties nor obligations to the demigods, sages, general living entities, family members, humankind or forefathers. <laughs> Such obligations are automatically fulfilled by the performance of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And before this, it was mentioned, one who is engaged in devotional service is not required to perform any such actions about which it was mentioned, about the forefathers, etc. Simply by performing devotional service, one can deliver hundreds and thousands of forefathers from all kinds of misery. All right. So what is stated here in the last part is, there are different rituals which are suggested in the scriptures for freeing your forefathers from sins or for purifying their actions or for offering them homage so that they are also happy in whichever place they are. Uh, but at the end it is said here, if somebody is, those are religious rituals, like you should do this, pindadan, this, that and all those things. But if somebody is cultivating spiritual knowledge, he is understanding that Lord Vishnu is the supreme, he is the end of it all. Then, he or she doesn't need to do any other ritual pertaining to their ancestors. Because it's stated here that just by pleasing Lord Vishnu, thousands and hundreds and thousands of ancestors can be delivered. Alright? So, shortcut to delivering your ancestors or shortcut to purifying the lineage, shortcut to purifying the blunders or the terrible sins. The, there's a word Pataka which is used here. Pataka means great sins. We don't know what our forefathers have done. So many times I see uh, and people tell me that oh there's a rumor that my ancestors had killed a snake and now that snake is coming <laughs> as Nagin and the snake is trying to uh, take different forms and they are trying to kill us and our family. Well I don't know what it is but there are stories which are there. So we don't know what sins our ancestors have done and what other sins which we have done. So when we take to spirituality, we read the scriptures, we cultivate divine knowledge, share the wisdom, we worship God, we take only food that is offered to God and we hear about the pastimes of God from elevated personalities either in YouTube or 
by going to satsanga that is why the word satsanga is used which means good association sata and sanga sanga means association sata means that which you that which takes you towards sattva sattva guna which is the mode of goodness which is the mode of enlightenment happiness peace joy content so there you go shortcut to pleasing your ancestors and protecting your family tradition is not that you go on recklessly doing all the remedies of pindadan doing this doing that that is required you can also do that but with that you have to take to spiritual knowledge read the scriptures follow the principles associate with the sages of today sages means there are no rishis left but there are still many great personalities in india and in so many other places with whom you can associate and you can learn from them you can hear their divine words the wisdom which they are spreading and by that you can elevate your consciousness and then shrimad bhagavatam says he is uh, that uh, that person who does this is he has no other obligation to the demigods that means to the devatas how many devatas are there 33 crore <laughs> you have to go and pay tax to everybody my god today i have to pay to ganesh tomorrow i have to pay to indra tomorrow i have to pay to this tomorrow i have to pay to agni tomorrow to that tomorrow to maybe surya oh my god you will die 33 crore you cannot do it directly one person that is lord vishnu end of it all nothing else is required all right so that is the shortcut of freeing your ancestors from all the curses and making them happy Until next time, wish you good luck. Bye bye. See you. Oh yes. And if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, then please subscribe to it below. And if you are interested in a person consultation with me, then approach me in my website with Ignatians. The link is below. And share this with everybody who is interested in learning the science of the Gita. All right. Until next time, with the last remaining verses of the first chapter. hopefully to be finished all right <laughs> until next time good luck bye bye see you tata